Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. My sister is a cheat. She's a dirty, scheming little cheat. I am going to upload this to Facebook, to, to YouTube, to Twitter. It's going everywhere. Let the annals of history show that Amy Adams Taylor, my horrible sister, just cheated at Pop the Bloody Pig. It's pathetic. All of the family sitting down for a nice festive game of Pop the Pig, right? It's her turn. She stuffs the little counter in there. It said three on it. She pushed down his head once. It clicked. She pushed down his head twice. It clicked. She pretended to push down on his head for a third time. It didn't click. So straight away, I'm on to her about it. Because, you know, I watch these things. You know, I've nothing gets past me. You can't outfox the foxiest fox of all time. So I've watched it. And I know exactly what's happened. I said, you haven't pushed that down the third time. He didn't click. And she's trying to be all blase about it. Oh, do you really think I'd cheat at Pop the Pig? Yes, I do. I've got the proof. He said he didn't click. Right? And she refuses to. And all the rest of the family on at me. Oh, Callum, just get on with it. Get on with it. Like, it doesn't matter. Well, there's consequences. And it had a direct impact on me because I was next in line, right? I pushed down his head on my go. First push, his bloody belly explodes. I've taken one for the team there. I've, I've taken a shot there, basically, for when I shouldn't deserve it. That shot should have been for Amy. It should have been for my sister. Right? And the rest of the family, they're all laughing about it. You know, blase, funny, funny, funny. They don't know how deep these tensions run. All right? My sister is smirking at me and they're all on at me to put on the forfeit hat and do the dance of shame. Well, I'm not doing a dirty little dance of shame, the loser's dance. That should not be me. That should be her dancing up there. I'm in the kitchen and I'm vlogging this so history knows was just what she's done. All right? I don't know how I'm going to get through the next couple of days. The rest of my family, Tim, is coming down tomorrow and they always join forces, those two. It's going to be everyone against me, you know, <laughs> and I know exactly why she's doing it. It's because last night I let it slip to Melody, her new lesbian life partner, just what a multitude of hot beef injections from a variety of different sources she'd had before she decided that she was gay. And you can see that Melody was like slightly disgusted by it. She went all quiet. My sister is just getting back at me for that. Well, if you do the crime, you do the bloody time, you know. And I don't care. At least I got a decent nice sleep night's sleep last night. I didn't have to listen to the pair of them through the wall doing whatever it is that they do, you know, furiously scissoring each other. So, uh, you know, it's it's one little Callum, basically, and she can cheat all she wants. It's on record now, and she will be ashamed when people see this. I have been made aware that Afghan Dan has decided to start piping up about me on his social media again. One of my followers, a guy named Charlie, tweeted it at me, and I've gone over and I've confirmed it. It's on his Instagram page, right? Apparently, he's going to send for me if he gets 10,000 likes. He's going to do it while swimming in the Blackpool Sea. Oh, good luck, Dan. You're going to catch bloody AIDS if you do, right? And what are you doing sending for me? Honestly, right? you did it back in 2016, you know, stupid little song, repetitive rubbish that talked about me getting back in my box and ignored the fact conveniently that you look like a Tic Tac with some pubes stuck to your head, right? I let you off. I felt sorry for you. I, I gave you a reply. It was me at about 30%, you know, and I body blowed you. I finished you. That's not my name. Cracked all over tic tac business everyone said so and for me that was the end of it you know i was willing to let bygones be bygones i felt sorry for you you know i thought at some point i'd probably end up buying a big mac off you and i didn't want to feel you know awkward when i did so all right and now a year later this is happening i mean last i bloody heard he was inside dropping the soap on purpose so he could get bloody bombed and now he's out and he's decided to send for me what on earth do you think you're doing if you do this afghan i will end you It'll be pathetic. You'll be known as the guy who was ended by me. You know, you're an actual rapper and I'm just a bloke. All right? But that's what I'll do. I've developed. I've come on as an artist. I've got my own bloody North Face t-shirt. If you want it, you know, I'm right here and it won't end well for you. All right, my house has been invaded by my sister Amy today. I've had to drive her out. You listen to this and you tell me this is actions of a normal person, not some kind of weird vegan terrorist, right? First of all, I'm woken after doing a night shift last night. I've worked all bloody night in my care job and I'm woken after getting home about an hour later by screeching, self-satisfied screeching coming up into my bedroom. All right? My sister's turned up. She doesn't even live here anymore, but she's bought her lesbian lover, Meadow. Not a real lesbian, by the way, my sister Amy. Just such a massive slot. There's no blokes left for her to sleep with, so she's had to change teams, right? As well as her lesbian lover, she's bought another feminist friend with her, another bloody vegan, this girl called bloody Jenny. Right? Couldn't even tell she was bloody human, let alone female. She looked like an Ewok, just a mass of matted hair, right? Three of them sitting in my living room. It stank. It stank of sweat and bloody hummus. It was revolting. And the worst thing of all was bloody Jenny was strumming away on a ukulele. One of those stupid little guitars that spasmoids you think they're spiritual play. 
The last thing she needs is to be furiously strumming and getting sweaty and judging by the smell, but she is. You play a ukulele, you're an idiot. Anyone that plays a ukulele looks like Jeremy Beadle wanking with his little deformed hand strumming away on that stupid little guitar. So that's what I'm dealing with straight away from waking up, right? But I'm a nice guy. I'll try and, try and stay kind of calm about this. I'll leave them to it, right? I think... I could, you know, I'll start my video, I'll start recording, I've got a big video to record today about the penis club and another one about Flo and Jonah's annoying little nationwide sisters, so I think I'll get on with that, but I can't because it's too bloody noisy, right? So then I think, well, I'll wait for him to go, I'll get myself some breakfast, so I come into the kitchen and I'm confronted by an overflowing bin that my sister has filled with her clothes that contain animal products, on top of it is this. It's a hat that I bought her for Christmas, made out of wool apparently, it needs to be chucked away, it's disgraceful when there's people homeless out there. Anyway, I try to ignore that, right? I start cooking up some bacon for my bloody breakfast, right? Getting ready to stick it in a butty and suddenly the kitchen door flies open. It's my sister and her girlfriend, Meadow. Having a massive go at me. Apparently I've been really disrespectful, really rude and arrogant by cooking bacon. I'm like, what are you on about? Why have I been rude? Apparently it's really affected that little messy Ewok, Jenny. She's gagging in the living room. She's almost crying. She can't abide the smell of bloody murder, apparently. Right. First up, not murder. You can't murder a pig. You can only murder another human, right? Second up, it's my house. She's a vegan. She's got a problem with it. She can leave. I'm not going to stop bloody cooking just because she doesn't share my opinion. And I'm saying that. And they're going mental at me. Apparently it's not an opinion, right? Apparently it's real. This is, you know, it's facts that animals are being harmed and stuff. No, that's what you believe. I know if everyone went vegan, farmers would kill all the animals. There'd be millions more killed. You know, a fundamental Muslim believes that bloody homosexuality and drinking alcohol is wrong and that everyone should be stopped. It doesn't make them right. It just makes it their opinion. You've got no right to force it onto others. And I'm saying this and they're going mental at me and saying I should be more respectful. Well, if she finds the smell of bacon so bloody yucky, I said, how what about the smell of her? Oh, you should have seen them. It's like setting a firework off. They went mental, mental, chicken oriental. Apparently, she doesn't wear deodorant because it bloody harms animals and stuff. It's tested on them and contains chemicals and stuff. What she's doing is saving creatures. No one's being bloody harmed. It's not offensive. Well, have you smelt her? Not bloody offensive if you were in bloody ten foot of her, you God. And to compare that to the smell of bacon cooking. You know, the smell of bacon is godly. In the end, I'll tell you what I did. I cooked my bloody sarnie. I got the hat out of the bin. Still got it now. I'm going to put it on out. Say, this is now a victory hat. And I went and sat in there. I made eye contact with them. Ate the body. And the whole time I did it, I was wibbling the little bloody bobble on top of it. Victory hat. In the end, they walked out because they knew they were weak and they've got nothing to bloody say about it. They've got no sane argument. If you want to be a vegan, it's fine. Just don't try and force it onto me, you idiot. Right, this is a warning about Pepper Pig for you. My nephew, Eddie, is here. Eddie, say hello. No, they don't want your little fruit thing, mate. That's all you. Generous, though. Good lad. Right, this is Eddie. He's my nephew. He's here. He's been here for a couple of hours now. All right. Pepper Pig is on my TV. It's been on for about an hour now. If I try and turn it off, he screams. He's obsessed. He's addicted to Pepper Pig. All right? And people need to be aware of what exactly Pepper Pig is. Because I've been watching this with him. And it is dark and it is disturbing. If you've got kids or you've got young siblings, brothers, sisters and stuff, don't let them watch this filth. Pepper Pig herself, she's an absolute ego bloody maniac. She's disgraceful. A minute ago, she hung up on Susie Sheep just because Susie Sheep could whistle. What kind of lesson are we teaching kids there? Peppa Pig, we had a fit of jealousy, so she hung up on Susie's sheep. It's crazy. Earlier, she was bullying her little brother. Peppa decides she wants glasses, and they all have to go to the bloody opticians. All pie out of the sky, mind you. Doesn't need glasses. All right? They force George to go for an eye test. He says he doesn't want to. They all start hysterically laughing at him. Why are you laughing at the little guy? He doesn't need an eye test. He's the only one speaking sense. Poor little guy. He'll end up a bloody school shooter or something. Peppa Bloody Pig is her sister. She's crazy. And the show, all of them think they're the bloody best at everything. They're boasting and showing off all the time. And there's this weird little Mr. Potato Head character. All right? As if talking animals aren't enough. We've now got talking vegetables. Yet sometimes they're eating the vegetables. So it's like a weird cannibalism. Peppa Pig is weird and twisted. Do not let your children watch it. Hate it. It's only because he'll go bloody mental that I'm having to watch it still. Uh, uh, if you've got kids, don't ever let them watch it. They'll get addicted and it will mess with their minds. Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, I have been on an emotional bloody roller coasters today. It's been a flyby tour of embarrassment, suspicion and bloody anger. Hated every minute of it. This morning, I've gone down to get my grocery shopping in for Easter. Gone to the co-op, right? Gone to pay and my card has been declined. 
Got to run it again, declined again. I had to scuttle out of there with my tail between my legs, mortified, totally embarrassed. Everyone's looking at me like I'm some kind of penniless bloody pauper, a jobless layabout or something. And it's not any old shop. This is the co-op. It's a shop of shops. You know, I'm privileged, incredibly privileged, really. I live within a mile of two excellent co-ops, and this was my number two store. However, word travels. It gets around, so I'm not happy about this. I get out of there, and I'm confused by this because it's me. You know, knowledge is my thing. I know exactly how much is in my account and it should have been more than enough to cover a little bit of shopping. Anyway, I think maybe it's the co-op's problem. Maybe their card machine's broken or something, so I'll try to get some cash out. Tried that, card is declined again. Cannot believe this. So, I start to walk home, and you know, I'm not happy about this. I've been embarrassed in my favourite shop, I can't get cash out, and suddenly it makes sense. I bank with Nationwide Building Society. Earlier this week, I made a video on them, how stupid their bloody Flo and Joan adverts are. And suddenly, my card is cancelled. A coincidence? I didn't bloody think so. So, get my mobile out, and I get Nationwide on the phone. And I'm not happy with them, you know, I'm ranting and raving a bit. Anyway, the guy I'm speaking to, he doesn't make things better. He's not taking me seriously, right? Anyway, he starts checking his bloody systems, and he comes back and he says, I can't find that your card has been rejected. I think he's calling me a liar. So I'm going mental, mental, chicken oriental at this guy. He backs down in the end and he apologises and said the card must be broken. That's convenient, isn't it? Four days after I criticised him. Anyway, he apologises and says they send me a new one in a kind of three to five working bloody days. So I hang up on him. I'm not really happy about this. I'm still suspicious about them. I get home and I'm having a bit of a rant about this and I notice my sister Amy is smirking away. And I confront her. Why the hell are you smirking? She pulls out of her pocket my bank card. I'm like, what the hell have you got there? I'm just trying to use it. How have you got that? Last night, she's gone into my private stuff, my desk, a sneaky bloody peek, and she has taken out of my private drawer my old expired bank card and swapped it up in my wallet for my current one. I've been using an expired one. No wonder it got bloody rejected. No wonder it wasn't bloody working. Anyway, I'm fuming at her about this, and she seems to find it hysterical, right? She's basically doubled over with laughter like she's going to pee herself. But I doubt she even urinates anymore. She's so disease-ridden, you know, had such a massive bloody plethora of penis in her life. It's probably some kind of STD-induced bloody discharge that comes weeping out, like a gone-off-camera whippy cream go, <laughs> or discoloured bloody creamidia. That's what it would be rather than urine, dirty bloody birdie. Anyway, I'm getting in her face about this because I'm not happy. And she tries to justify it, saying I spend my money on meat and stuff, so actually she's saving people, she's doing good. And that just winds me right up, right? I grab her phone off the table and I run into the kitchen. She tries to chase me. Before she can get me, I'm in the fridge and I stick it in a bloody packet of bacon that was open. I'd had it for breakfast, right? Face down in there. So she's confronted with bloody pig jeans. She's bloody crying about it and saying I've gone too far. I don't I don't think so. You've bloody ruined my bank card, my reputation in the co-op. I've now got to go to the bloody nationwide blank itself if I want to get money out for the next five days. You started this. Don't come cry at me now, you bloody hippie little whore bag. Right, I'm sorry to rant at you guys, but I needed to get that off my chest. It was meant to be a proper video today about how to deal with breakups and stuff, but my mind's not in the right place after this. Uh, if I calm down, maybe we could go live tonight together or something about nine-ish. Uh, we'll see. Hey all and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, I'm sorry, I've tried. I've tried really hard this last couple of weeks not to be doing this, not to be sitting here angrily ranting away at the camera. I've been trying to be like a proper YouTuber, right? But now I've been sitting here 40 minutes trying to make my Tinder video and I can't because I'm too bloody triggered, all right? So I'm sorry, you've got a rant. I'm sorry, just feel free to skip this video, but the fat spawn of Satan has made my day into an absolute bag of arse leavings and I need to get it off my chest before I can continue, all right? So, Today, I'm working, right? I'm a caregiver. I started work at 5 a.m. this morning. Long, long, early start, right? And it's been a nightmare. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. The equipment's not working. People are triggering me. My mum bought a stupid seeded loaf of bread yesterday and it's, it, seed got stuck in my teeth for my morning toast. It was annoying me all bloody day. Anyway, I finished at one o'clock, right? I'm sitting there on the bus. It's sweet relief. I finally dislodged a stupid seed and I'm just happy to be sitting down because I'm 
knackered, right? Boss is going along, we pull into a bus stop, right? Straight away, you know there's gonna be trouble. The woman waiting there is gigantic, right? Bus driver, it's a massive palaver. He has to lower the little ramp so she can waddle on, right? I'm not making any judgments, it's fine. If someone's big, they're big. That's okay by me, you know, it's none of my business, right? Anyway, she pays her money and she starts coming down the aisle, right? And straight away I know I'm in trouble because her beady, greedy little eyes have spotted the seat next to me, the one that's spare, right? It's the nearest one next to her. Obviously, she's in her plant herself down there. This, I know, is going to be an issue for me because she reminds me of one of the pigs from the Three Little Pigs story, right? And not because of her vastness. It's due to the fact that she's got these little hairs coming out of her chin. Obviously, the polycysticness has kicked in because of her vastness. And also the fact that she's got very little clothes on. A tiny little pair of shorts and a t-shirt that reveal vast amounts of flesh. I don't know why fat people do that. It's revolting. But anyway, she reminds me of one of the little pigs from the story because that's what they were wearing in my school in the book we used to read. Anyway, she comes to the seat, right? And I prepared myself. I always do when someone of size is going to sit next to me. I move over to the right slightly and buy myself a few extra inches. When they sit down and plaster themselves next to me, as they always do, I've got inches to move over to and a little bit of daylight there. But, you know, call me horrible, but I do not like someone's flesh being plastered into me. Makes me feel a bit sick. Anyway, she comes She comes to sit down, right? She grabs the seat in front, right? Holds on to it. Her knuckles are white. She's clinging onto it, right? And she's basically hoists herself. She's uh, uh, coming at me. It's like, I felt like a speck next to an orbiting planet or something. Hoists herself, swings herself into the seat. I'm pushed. Even me, six foot five, beast, I'm just tumbled into the window, right? Plastered up against it. One side, her, the other side, right? Literally, my arm is encased in a hot, sweaty wall of flesh. It is like a sweat straight jacket, a fat straight jacket encasing my arm. I cannot move it. So I'm sitting there, right? I'm thinking, be calm. You've done really well not getting triggered. So I'm breathing deeply, trying to stay calm. It's horrible. Every breath I take, I can smell that acrid sweat. It smells like a jungle animal in heat or something, right? But I'm thinking, this cannot get any worse. It'll be over in 15 minutes. And then she pulls out her phone, right? And not just for a phone call. She gets it out and she does one of these little facey time he calls. It wasn't Skype, but there's a little face on the screen that she's talking to. The guy she's talking to, great big, muscly black man, right? And evidently, he's her boyfriend because they're having like boom, boom talk, right? And it doesn't stop there. Bus is noisy. Obviously, she can't hear him. She's got a little speaker on the end of her phone. Starts doing that, putting it up to her ear while she's listening to him. And then going like that when she's talking to him. So while he's talking, right, this is what she's doing. I'm sitting here. This is my face. And I've got this muscle-bound black guy doing all these little weird faces and talking sexy talk in my bloody face, in my face, while well, I've got her sweating, sweating on me, dripping on me, hot, sweaty mess on my arm, I feel sick, right, and it's, it's, it's explicit, talk, she's going on about what she's going to do when she sees him later, they've got this thing called the three S's, silk, bloody sucking, and sex, and that's what's going to be performed, three bloody S's, my arm, she needs two S's, she needs slim fast, and she needs a shower, I had to do that for 20 minutes, just sat there plastered, couldn't do anything about it, honestly. And now I'm home and I'm scratching around on Tinder, trying to drum up a bit of interest. And her sex life is so good, she's having bloody phone sex on the bus. World is mad. Her mother is a dirty little cheesecake thief. She's gone too far this time, the greedy little guts. Honestly, right, on Friday, I was forced under duress to make Adam's cake. It is a family recipe that's been passed down from generation to generation. It's a lemon zesty cheesecake with a buttery ginger biscuit base. It's incredible. It's lovely, right? I am the only one who can make this currently. My mum's arthritis prevents her from making the buttery biscuit base, crushing it, and my sister's never bloody learned. Anyway, my mum forced me to make one on Friday. She was going on at me all bloody day. Make the Adam's cake for the royal wedding. Make the Adam's cake. We're having family over. Anyway, eventually I agreed because I love Adam's cake. It's delicious. Right? So I spent four hours on Friday evening making the bloody Adam's cake, crushing the biscuits, gently bloody grating the zest of six lemons and then juicing them in double cream, whipping it, condensed milk, all of it, right? Put it in the fridge to set and I realised I'd forgotten to buy the bloody garnish. Traditionally, it's got to be a Cadbury's flake sprinkled up on the top, crushed and sprinkled. So, got myself down to the corner shop. They'd run out of flakes, it was late. There was nowhere else open, so I had to buy a bloody twirl. Anyway, crush it on there, it looked fine. It was great, I thought. Put it in the fridge, let it set overnight. Next day, it's the royal bloody wedding. Absolute man, my whole family's there, my sister's there. Tim is there, my cousin, he's a right spasmoid. Now, I don't like the royal family, but I wasn't pushing it in people's faces. I just wanted to be quiet about it, but no one will let you not enjoy a royal wedding. They all go at you all day long. I'm facing a barrage from them. Oh, Callum, Callum, they bring in millions of pounds to the economy, do they? 
Do they, are they there at Buckingham Palace taking the money? No. People would still come and pay to go and look at all the palaces and stuff. They're not doing anything for that. Oh, Callum, 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 we've got to support him because he was in the army, Harry. Well, thousands of people were in the army. Some of them lost limbs. They've come back unable to work and they've got no money. Yet we're paying for his wedding. The bloke who's got the richest grandma in the world just because the family was born into. It makes no bloody sense. It's mental. The whole thing's mental. I hate the royal family. They work hard, apparently. Do they? Do they really work hard? Yeah, they might do a lot of hours, but their job is to live in a palace rent-free, eating the best food in the world made by the best chefs. I would work bloody hard. I'd be 24 hours a day if that was my job. They're a bag of arts, right, the royal family, but still, <clears throat> I'm having to endure this all for my cousin all day long. But all through it, I'm keeping my beady eye on the Adams cake, making sure there's enough of it left, because I want at least a quarter of it left, right? Anyway, we crack it open, we have the buffet and stuff, we get round to the Adams cake, and my mum straight away is moaning about it. It doesn't taste right, apparently. Later on, when she's cleared up, she finds a bloody twirl wrapper in the bin and she confronts me about it. I had to admit it. There's nothing I can do about it. Anyway, she's ungrateful about it all day long, disparaging about my bloody Adam's cake. There's nearly half of it left because of her bloody harsh words, but I don't mind. That's more Adam's cake for me. So, I put it in the fridge, right, and I leave it overnight. I go to work the next day. I get back home, and instead of three quarters, well, a good over half of an Adam's cake, this is what I was confronted with last night. This little sliver of cake. She's moaned about my cake in front of everyone, in front of the whole family, and then the absolute greedy goss has, has stolen away to the fridge and stuffed her bloody face with it. She's eaten my cake. I'm fed up with this. I'm fed up with my bloody family with dealing with this. It's not just this. You know, I was ill last week, really ill. I had a nasty dental infection. Puss was coming out of my mouth at one point. She did nothing for me, right? Bearing in mind that five years ago when she had her fall, I, I left London, I gave up my life to come back and take care of her and stuff. Wasn't even offered a bloody hind soup. That should be a prerequisite if you're a parent. The least you should do is heat up a tomato or a chicken and mushroom soup and offer it to your bloody offspring. Nothing. I was left up there to live or die, and that is the way it's been with my family. You guys have seen it. I've been making videos for nearly two years now, you know, documenting the abuse I get on a daily basis. It never ends. I can't make a video. I try to come down on my da, 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 on a bloody sewing machine. So I try and go in the other room and do some streaming. My sister's in there watching Cowspiracy for the bloody eight billionth time. It just drives me mad. And we're going to watch this Tic Tac advert, and I'll tell you exactly what I think of it. There's a world of possibilities out there. All right, I'm sorry to pause this so quickly, but are you kidding me? That is Mr. Tic Tac. Did you see that entrance, that quincy little mint scene? And that's not, that's not like a homophobic thing. I'm not mocking people who are gay there. I'm fine with that. You know, my motto is no homo, no homophobe. Words that I live by. But seriously, that stupid little dance was ridiculous. You know, I know dance. Anyone who watches my channel knows that I know, you know, I've got moves and I've got grooves. You know, I've got many dancing videos on my channel. And they've gone with that. That is a massive slap in the face. I mean, I'm, I'm going to rewind it. I want to look at that again. I want to see that stupid little entrance again. There's a world of possibilities out there. Oh, God, that was awful. A little spirit thing is going on there almost while he sashays about. I almost caught AIDS from that dance and it was so bad. Cannot believe that. You could have had this and you've gone for that. That's mental. Perhaps Tic Tac can help you open up a little. You played a mean recorder in year seven. Okay, what's going on there then? That's what I want to know. It looks a little bit wanky blowjobby to me all around his mouth there. I mean, obviously it's not the international symbol for blowjob. That has like a bobbing head while they're doing it. However, I would say it's not a good idea to be doing that around your mouth. It does look a little bit weird and cocky. Don't like it. Dave, offer them a Tic Tac and you could be jamming in no time. Is oh God, why would you want to jam with a bunch of hippity hipsters? Did you see that guy? Stupid pretentious little hat jammed upon his head. Ridiculous. I would pay hundreds of packs of Tic Tacs just for them to go and jam somewhere else a bit further away so I didn't have to listen to their weird pretentious warbling of obscure songs while they hope that everyone looks at them. Bunch of idiots. Matt Shirley from The Office. It's Frisbee Friday, Dave. Frisbee Friday? Never heard of it. That's not a thing. What about this young lady? I think she's had her eye on your Tic Tacs for a while now. Right, okay, that's a little bit sexual, isn't it? Kind of rattling in the Tic Tacs, implied boom boom going on. Uh, basically, for those of you who don't know what's happening, it is 
innuendo. Uh, it's kind of implied the hint of boom boom. I mean, the girl knows what's going on. Her face, she looks over, you know, the sexual matters being discussed. I mean, obviously, it's not massively explicit. I can't complain too much about that. It's not something that you're going to be uncomfortable watching with your mother. However, I don't like it. It adds nothing to the advert and it's stupid. Everyone loves a Tic Tac, Dave. It's time to open up. Everyone loves a Tic Tac, do they? Well, that's not something that I've found to be true in my life, to be honest with you. Um, in fact, I've found about 7% of my audience love a Tic Tac. Um, about 23% tolerate the Tic Tac, uh, and about 70% of my audience actively dislike the Tic Tac. I mean, obviously there, I'm talking about me rather than the actual suite of Tic Tac. However, I would imagine in real life, the statistics would be quite similar. I mean, it's a little cylinder of flavored pure sugar. How many people actually enjoy eating them? That's the question I'm asking. Um, okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty of it. The advert's rubbish. It is absolutely poor. It makes no sense at all. You've got that stupid bloody bloke quaffing mincy quincing around with his spirit fingers. I mean, what is he going on about? Why are we not just talking about how nice a Tic Tac is? You're selling food, you should be talking about how delicious they are. The hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. All right, unfortunately, this is a warning. Uh, something has happened to me over the past few days, past week, which has uh, absolutely disgusted me. Uh, it shook me to my core. Um, right, okay. Let me take you back in time, about a week or so ago, when it all began. Um, I woke up one morning, right? As I went to get out of bed, the sunlight hit something. Um, it, it shone back at me like a burning bush, a red warning flag or something, which is uh, appropriate, to be honest with you. All right? It turns out it is a ginger pubic hair sitting there proudly on my white sheet. Straight away, I'm over to it like a shot, you know, I'm examining it. The investigation starts, all right? On closer examination, it turns out it is not a lone pubic hair. My bed is riddled with them. All different types of pubes. You know, I know what my pubes look like, and most of them were not mine. There were all these different colours and types, like some kind of puby little rainbow or something, in my bed where I'm sleeping. Obviously, I'm horrified by this. Thoughts are racing through my head. I'm thinking, it's my sister. It's my sister. She's pranking me, you know. But even her, I'm thinking, you know, massive, massive, slotty little skit that she is. Has she got access to that many different kinds of pubes? You know, anyway, I keep quiet about it because I don't want to publicise this. You know, if it is my sister pranking me, I want to investigate fully and then there will be retribution. That was my thought process at this point, all right? So that's been rumbling on for the past few days. Also, what started a week or so ago, is I started to go to the gym. Um, I'm not one of those people who goes to the gym in stupid little lycra, works out, gets all sweaty, and then wears the sweaty stuff home. You know, I'm civilized. I go in normal clothes. I'll go to the gym, I work out and stuff, have a shower, put normal clothes back on, and then leave like a normal person, right? Anyway, I did this yesterday, and as I was getting changed, I noticed a bloke opposite me had a really manky Veruca, right? So today, I took down my flip-flops, wore them in the shower and stuff, right? Went back to dry myself off, got my clothes on and stuff, took my flip-flops off to put them in a the bag, and they are covered in pubic hair. It suddenly becomes clear to me exactly what's happening. The floor is just infested with pubes. Men are shedding it willy bloody nilly. They're rubbing it off themselves. As if to illustrate the point, there's a bloke over from me who's doing the bloody that thing where your towel dry, your testicles and anus by rubbing the towel in and out of it like some kind of cheese grater or something. I'm just literally, I can almost visualise the amount of pubes that are being dislodged and just sprinkled onto the floor. My feet were picking them up. I was coming home thinking I was clean after showering, going to bed and spreading pubes all in my bed. It is literally, I've got like visions at this point, rocking through my brain, realisations. You know, there's a bloke who goes to the gym who I quite like, right? I don't know his name, but we have a wry smile at each other. He's middle-aged like me, he's quite fat, he's bald, and he's got a really her soup body, like ginger, ginger, wiry body hair coming out of him, right? I always liked him. I always gave him a nod. I'm suddenly thinking that ginger hair on my bed's probably bloody his. I feel betrayed, you know. He's liberally been dousing my feet with bloody buttock fluff and stuff. And I'm taking that back into my bed. God knows. I toss and turn. Some of it could have ended up on my, oh God, my mouth or something. <coughs> Makes me feel sick. I cannot let my mind go there. Oh, I feel like it's in there now. Well, it's just disgusting. It's disgusting. You know, men at the gym, sweaty. Oh, God, best case scenario, that is armpit hair. You know, even probably cock and ball hair is preferable to sweaty 
anal hair after Sean has been working out. It's making me feel sick. This is a... No, actually, this isn't a warning. I'm exposing a con now. It's more serious than a bloody warning. I'm actually exposing a con that's going on in broad, bloody daylight. And it's a little man like you and me who's being affected. So it stops now, right? Because I've had a difficult day today. I've just gone to get myself a little treat to cheer myself up. And it's like a slap in the face. A kick in the bloody teeth. It's been made worse because I've been conned, right? Let me give you a little bit of background to this. I've had a difficult day today. I've been training all day. I hate training sessions with my work. I have to go to this hotel and there's loads of people who work for the company in the area who I don't know who come along, I hate them. Anyway, I got there, I'm one of the first people in. I walk in there, there's one guy there, so I go over to introduce myself to say hello, you know, you've got to be friendly, all right? I get over to him, I'm saying hello, before I can even tell him my name, he just blurts out to me about how he's bought a cup of coffee for a homeless man on the way here this morning, all right? I'm thinking, this is weird. Why has he told me that? Is he that desperate for attention? What does he want? A pat on the back. So I tell him, well done, you know, it's great. Buy a cup of coffee for a homeless person. Definitely support them. You know, they're going through a hell of a lot. You know, you wouldn't want to be living on the streets. But why are you boasting about it? Anyway, I try and move on and start introducing myself properly. Someone else walks in. Mid-sentence, mind. He just drifts off over there and starts telling them about how we bought a cup of coffee for a bloody homeless person. Couldn't believe it. The rude it was. And I watch him. And he's like a little boastful pinball as people walking, bing, 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 bouncing between people, jibby jabbering on about his cup of coffee. Ridiculous, I overheard him one time, he's now, he's embellishing the details on it now. It's now a large cup of coffee that he bought for a homeless person. A crock of bloody arse, that is. I mean, you get the same coffee, no matter how much you pay in each of the bloody cups. He's been conned, basically. He's an idiot, a boastful idiot. Anyway, luckily the learning starts about then, so he has to shut the hell up. Lunchtime rolls around. It starts a bloody again. He's going on about it a bloody again. Now, he's going on about how he tweeted about it earlier. He's literally boasting about it on Twitter and in person. And he's even going on about how you should talk about it when you've done stuff like this. You should, you might encourage others to pay it forward. Jesus Christ, you bought a cup of coffee for them, for God's sake. And he's jibber jibbering on about how he got four likes, how he's influenced positively four people. All that proves is just four people on Twitter, as stupid as him. Absolutely need to pick that up again because this is evidence that I need now, right? So, after that, I, I'm not in the best of mood, so I'm going home. I've got a very big video idea in my mind, so I'm thinking about what I want to do to film. And I think, you know what, get yourself a treat on the way home. So get myself a packet of peanut M&M's, right? Get home, stick my flowery shirt on, I'm feeling a little bit better, right? Sit down to think about the video, to start planning it and treat my M&M's. Pick them up, right? Feel it. There's barely any in here. Right? There's not even enough to bunch up at the bottom. It's like a single individual layer of peanut M&M's. It's disgraceful, right? So you guys told me immediately. I open it and I count them, right? We'll do this. We'll investigate. It starts here, right? 19 M&M's. 19 M&M's in a whole packet, right? When I was little, right, every Sunday, we used to go swimming on the Isle of Wight over to Sandown. It was a big drive over from Cowes. My mum would buy a packet of M&M's for me and my sister to share. I was in charge of counting them, right? My sister used to witness it. She had to witness it because of her bloody distrustful nature, dishonest nature, actually. Right? Never was there less than 50 M&Ms each. Sometimes there was even more. You know, if there was an odd number, my mum would have to eat it, so there were no arguments, right? And now we're down to 19. We've gone from over 30 to less than bloody 20. Yes, it's been like 15, 20 bloody years since then, but still, that is a third of a packet gone. By the time I'm 50, what are we going to be having? A little handful, like three bloody peanut M&Ms. And you know, I'm saying this because I love them. You know, it's not just me criticising. You guys know. I said it in one of my first videos that I crush peanut M&Ms, you know. And that's not just me. That wasn't just me flexing how big and strong I am. Yeah, a little bit of that was, you know, I wanted to intimidate people. They were annoying me. But the reason I crush them and not on other sweeties is because they're delicious. I then eat them because I'll enjoy them. But no more. You know, I'm calling an end to it now. I'm not going to be conned. Disgraceful. Right, I've got something sick and twisted to talk to you about today. This is a warning because there's a group of twisted, deviant, just dirty individuals out there doing dirty stuff and you all need to be aware of it. All right, the other day I'm sitting there and I'm reading the BBC News site, all right, and I see this. Serial poopers. What makes people poo in public places? Public poopers. People are literally dropping their trousers, squatting down, and crapping willy-bloody-nilly. 
This is disgraceful. You guys know how much I hate pooing in public, right? And I thought it was just dogs doing it. About a year ago, I had this whole campaign, you know, like a crusade to clean the bloody streets up from dog poo. I was fed up and treading in it. I was out there, day and bloody night, picking up poos, right? And now it turns out that I might have picked up human poos as well. Human poos. People are squatting down like they're animals. What the hell is going on in the world? So, immediately, right, I'm straight onto this. You guys know me, you know, I'm investigating, right, so I'm searching for stuff. And I've come across a few videos, right? This is an example of it going on live. This is a woman in a coffee shop participating in public pooping. So here she is. She's arguing back and forth. Obviously, she wants to use the public bathroom in there. The guy behind the counter's like, no, I can't let you do that. You haven't bought anything. She's like, no, I want to poo. I really want to poo. And the guy's like, well, I'll lose my job. You can't poo. I'm sorry. You can't poo. She's like, well, I'm going to poo. And now she's taking down her trousers, right? She's squatting up against the wall. The guy's trying to stop her. But he says, oh my God, she's pooed. It's dropped out. How did it even happen that bloody quickly? And she's just picked up the poo and thrown it. Now she's wiping her ass and throwing the poopy little tissues at everyone. What is this? Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. She's lost all humanity. Jesus Christ. I mean, I get angry. But I have a rant. You have a rant. You tell people you're angry. You don't crap up against the counter in the middle of a bloody cafe. Lost all bloody humanity. More in common with an animal. I bet she's a bloody vegan. She won't eat animals, but she will poop like one in the middle of bloody public. I know you're probably thinking at this point, Callum, this is just an isolated case. This woman is clearly mental, mental, chicken oriental. She's some kind of crackhead or something who's just wandered in off the street, right? No, that is not what's happening here, right? It is not just crackheads who've lost control of their bowels. There are people in positions of responsibility, right? Watch this next clip. Kenilworth schools say Dr. Thomas Tremaglini has been charged. The superintendent doesn't live far from Homedale High School. That's where police say somebody was relieving themselves on the track and football field. Superintendent of an American school. That's like the equivalent of a headmaster. Can you imagine it? You get to school early one morning by accident. You go out to run a few laps or something, and you see your headmaster squatting down in the middle of the bloody running track, squeezing out a steaming Mr. Whippy or something. Oh, hey, oh, Mr. Thomas, uh, let's just never talk about this again. It's weird. There's kids there. This bloke's meant to be their headmaster, and he's pooping on the track, the running track, every morning before school. Staff and coaches complained it was happening almost on a daily basis, so they set up surveillance in the area on Tuesday morning and allegedly caught Dr. Tramaglini in the act. Caught him in the act. Caught him squeezing out a poo. This. Disgusting, right? And again, you're probably thinking at this point, oh, look, he's a headmaster. He has to deal with loads of kids. Some of them are probably right little buggers, right? So you can understand him being angry. Maybe it's some kind of weird and twisted, dirty protest or something. It's not. It's not. There are other people doing this. It's like a fad or a fashion or something. Watch this. It is the picture strategically cropped that is united in Akron neighborhood. A man pants down, defecating on the hood of a car that was parked in this Akron driveway. On a car. Someone's bloody motor parked in their driveway. It's not like it's in the street and it's blocked his bloody pathway or something. He's gone out of his way to walk up into their driveway, pull down his pants and poo on their bloody bonnet. This image captured by a camera set up after it happened not once before, but seven. This is our seventh time here. Seven times seven. How would you explain seven times? He's planning it. He's planning it, he's thinking about it, he's doing it on purpose. You know, once, maybe you could excuse it, right? He'd had a few too many beers or something and thought it was funny or something, or he'd been caught short. I mean, it happened to me. I was doing a vegan challenge on this channel, right? About a year ago, I went vegan for two weeks and it played havoc with my stomach, right? I went jogging one day and started getting these stomach cramps. I was caught short. There was no bathroom near me. It was horrible. I had to crawl in to the middle of a train and be covered, right? And I had to do my business like a dirty little dog and then bury it in a hole, like an animal, right? I felt revolting afterwards. But you know what? I never went vegan again and I never went jogging again when I had a bad bloody tummy. I learned from my mistake seven times. Uh, that is not a mistake. Same car, same place. The car belongs to Linda's daughter. Her husband set up the camera and handed the image over to Akron police who found that this has happened to 19 other people in this Akron neighborhood since... 19. 
19 separate individuals have been targeted in this campaign of bloody crappery. It's, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's a campaign of terror going on in this poor bloody town. And can you imagine a worse way to start the day? You know, everyone hates getting up bloody early for work or college or whatever it is you do. You stumble out, it's dark, it's cold and stuff, and you walk straight in to a human poo sitting there on your bloody car that you've now got to clear up before you can even leave for work. Disgusting, it's disgraceful. Whoever is doing this, whatever dirty, twisted little spasmoid is doing this, you need to take a look at yourself in the mirror because you are sick and twisted. You're a pervert. Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, forget everything that you think you know about bumblebees because they are arrogant little arseholes. I'm here to tell the truth about them because everyone thinks they're harmless. They're lovely, you know, oh, save a bee because they're dying out. You know, you see one fly past with his bloated fat body and these tiny little ridiculous wings that shouldn't even make it fly. You think it's cute, you think it's comical. Right? It's wasps that everyone thinks are the evil little knobheads and they are. Wasps are evil, right? You know, they, they sting, they sting, they sting, they fly off and still live. They're ultra obnoxious. They're basically the French of the bloody insect world, right? But bumblebees are even worse. Today, I went out to my garden with my morning coffee, right? We're only just woken up, mind you. Go to sit down on the chair, sit down, and suddenly I feel a massive, massive pain in my ass. I jump up, right? I look down, and there's this fat little bastard bumblebee writhing on the chair. I've sat on it right in the cleft of my bloody buttocks, basically, and somehow that little bastard is still alive, right? So I've left it there because I thought, like, I, I, it stung me. It's going to die. I need to go in and sort this out. So it, it was in a very tender place, right? Basically, very close to where arse meets hole. And, you know, I suffer from hemorrhoids. So I was worrying at this point that I've been speared, harpooned by this bloody stinger or something. So straight away, I'm off up into the bathroom thinking I'll deal with him later. He's going to die. I'll check on it in a minute, right? So I go upstairs to the bathroom. Obviously, I need to get this stinger out of my arse is what I'm thinking. Who can I ask? I'm not going to get my mum to come in and inspect my bum. So basically, I'm having to just touch myself in the bathroom. I can't see it in a bloody mirror. I can't get there. So I'm running my hands over my inner buttocks. Like some kind of bloody pervert or something. Cannot find a stinger. I'm perplexed by this, right? I'm thinking, how the hell has this happened? You know, bees, everyone knows it. They leave their stinger in you and then they bugger off and die, right? So I go downstairs and I go out to look at this bumblebee. He's gone. He's scappered. How the hell is he gone? He's meant to die. And he's somehow, he's got away. I'm the one who's not even got a body. Just, I'm in pain, right? And he's buggered off. So I'm Googling it. I'm Googling it. Bumblebees don't die. They can just sting your willy bloody nilly like a wasp. It's basically, it's a fat, overweight wasp is what a bumblebee is. There's no consequences for it. Right? And they're being encouraged into this all by the bloody hippie soy-sucking spasmoids. You're like, oh, save the bumblebees. Leave a saucer of sweetened water out for them to drink if they get tired. They're getting lazy. They're getting lazy. They're lying around waiting for these saucers of bloody sweetened water and unsuspecting people like me are sitting on it right? and getting stung. And the thing's not even bloody dying. I didn't even get the satisfaction of stamping on the little bastard. Honestly, bumblebees are just overweight wasps. Avoid them. A warning, the wildlife is out of control at the moment. Three times I've been accosted today. It's been mental, awful. Like, literally, number one, I was sitting there at my computer with my shorts on and I feel a little tickle on my knee and there's this little fat black spider on my knee sitting there bold as brass. Immediately, I've brushed him off. He's flown, right? I didn't get to kill him because I was too shocked by the whole situation. It would get. All right, number two, a fly has been buzzing around my head for about an hour today. There's loads of flies in my house. It's driving me mad, right? Him, I did manage to kill, thank God. And number three, I was trying to have a little snooze on the sofa earlier and a moth flew into my bloody eye. A moth flying around in the daytime. The heat is driving them mad. And that is another warning. There's another two weeks of this heat wave. I've just read it on the news, right? And I don't want to be the guy to complain about the heat because it's great to have sunshine, but it's testing what it's doing to the wildlife. And also, bloody chafing situation. That's actually warning number three. Guys, it's, you know, it's sweat city down there at the moment. You may want to consider telk. Come out to the kitchen and I have seen something that has reminded me of me being triggered the other night. I'm glad, actually, because this needs talking about, right? You guys know chips are everything to me. I love chips. They're massively important to me. However, I've always struggled finding a good oven chip. You know, you stick them in the oven, they're raw, they're raw. You have cooked them for about 40 minutes, they're still raw. You put them in for another minute and then they're cremated. It's, it's always been impossible. Until about a year or so ago, I discovered McCain's French fries. 
put them in for the required amount of time, I think it's 16, 17 minutes, they come out, they're crispy, they're perfect, they're lovely, right? So, I bought what I thought was a packet of McCain's fries the other day. The other night, I come out to make myself some dinner, get the french fries out of the oven, well, french fries out of the freezer, and this is what's on there. Five minute cook time. I'm thinking, what, they changed the recipe or something, all right? So I think, well, you gotta trust it. You gotta trust it. It's what it says on it, so you gotta trust it, idiot that I am, all right? So I put my chicken key in for the required amount of time. Seven minutes before it's due to be finished cooking. I put these in the oven, get my beans on and stuff, all right? Get it all out, and I'm confronted with a basically raw, well, it's not raw, because it's cooked, it's hot, um, but it, it's just floppy, it's just soggy, it's like a permanently flaccid penis, it's revolting, right? I could not eat that dinner, I had disappointment just clinging to me for the rest of the evening, you know, like the way, uh, when you do a particularly stinky poo after a hangover or something, the smell just lingers in the air for hours afterwards, that's how I felt, just disappointed for the rest of the evening. All because they've gone and spoiled something that was brilliant, they came across, finally, an oven chip that cooks well, and now they've spoiled it by trying to take it down to a five minute cook time, and I know what you're thinking, or maybe you just need to leave it in longer so i've experimented it's like all the other oven chips that came before it it's raw it's limp it's flaccid and not in a good way like a, a mcdonald's chip where it's permeated with extra fat or something just as in a, a just a revolting little uncooked maggoty worm way right and you do that and you do that and you leave it in for 10 minutes it's the same about 12 minutes it's the same around 14 minutes it goes burn. There's nobody in between. It's a shame, McCain, you've spoiled something that was wonderful and finally a solution for something that was really needed. And now you've tried to make it better, you've fiddled with something that needed to be, didn't need to be fiddled with, and you've messed it up. You've spoiled it. It's a lesson. Right, I don't think I can end this vlog without fully dissecting what happened at the World Cup. Just explaining why it annoyed me so much. The whole thing was encapsulated with an image that's been all over the newspapers today. Paul Pogba dabbing with the world bloody cop. I mean, talk about disrespectful. His jaws were bloody May and he's dabbing with it. Dickhead dabbing is, oh, it's disgusting. And to think that that could have been Harry Maguire standing there, grinning on his big, beautiful, misshapen head, doing it for everyone who's got a misshapen head. You know, it could have been him holding up Jules Vermeer and the whole of England behind him. Just, you know, it makes you sick what could have been. And the Croatians, you know, I'll hold my hands up. I'll hold my hands up. In the semi final, they were better than us. And I was happy to admit that. And then after the game, there's all this stuff, Modric coming out. They wanted to stuff it down the pundits' throats because they were saying they might be tired. We were just looking on the bright side. Lineker wasn't doing anything bloody wrong. Leave Lineker alone and bloody Shearer. The two of them were just a bit hopeful. They're allowed to be hopeful. They're allowed to hope that they might have been tired. You know, it just struck me as bitterness. No one bloody likes England and it makes me sick. It makes me sad. Also, Virgin Bloody Media. I need to talk about them just before we finish because how they can call themselves Virgin. Someone tweeted this to me. How can they call themselves Virgin when they are shafting me in the arse repeatedly? Virgin, my bloody arse. Honestly, my coverage is terrible. I'm leaving Virgin. They are making me absolutely sick with their ridiculous service. I tweeted them. I said it's rubbish, and they tweeted me back saying, oh, why don't you phone up? I phoned up. I bloody, I'm not an idiot. I phoned up. I spent 40 minutes on the phone to someone who barely speaks English to tell me there's an outage in my area. That's what I was phoning to tell you. I want it back. Anyway, I'm going to Sky. Yeah, I don't care about it anymore. I've just had enough. And the annoying noises on the control as well if you press the wrong button. <coughs> it's not pleasing. Nothing about Virgin is pleasing. Uh this video goes out to Gay MX. I have been made aware that this FIFA YouTuber has grown some balls from somewhere and got a bit brave, right? And he's called me out for the boxing match, for this whole KSI, Logan Paul, the whole retard fest. He wants to fight me on the bloody undercard, right? The only bad thing about this is I think I've come a little bit late to the party. Uh, I was working yesterday and last night, and today I've been very busy uh, producing a statement over on Facebook to refute the allegations, spurious allegations, I might add, regarding the size of my penis, right? So, but unfortunately, some spasmoids didn't know that sometimes it's cold outside and sometimes pers perspective makes a difference. But that's been sorted now, and I've gone and logged into Twitter, and I see it's full of it, right? This gay MX wants to fight me. He's even done a bloody little video. He calls me a Tic Tac kid. Well done, mate. You're original. Only two years late, right? And also, he calls me son in this video. I'm literally old enough to be your father. Why are you calling me son? It just makes you look like even more of a knobhead and you don't seem to need any kind of help in that regard, to be honest with you, from what I've seen, right? Anyway, it looks like he's agreed to fight the Halal Ham. Now, 
I don't want to get in the way of this because the Halal Ham seems like a decent bloke. He's funny, right? However, if this falls apart for any reason, I will be waiting. Because to be honest with you, this guy, he may be tall, but there's no way he's like me. He's not from the school of hard knocks. He seems like he's a public, body, public school boy or something. If it does fall apart and you need a fight, GMX, I will be here and I will be waiting for you. And honestly, my friend, well, you're not really my friend. Honestly, GMX, you will go down easier than your slightly slutty sister. So, you know, think about it because you're going to go down. Right, I've had it with that fat face, slap mouth twat, Jamie Bloody Oliver, and I hope he sees this. I hope you see this, Jamie Oliver, because you are a twat. You're a massive twat. You're the twattiest twat of all time. You need to keep your overprivileged mouth shut and leave our food the hell alone. Honestly, I've never liked the bloke. Right from the moment he quiffed himself onto our screens as the naked chef. Naked body chef my ass. What does nudity have to do with food. Nothing. Does it enhance it? No. Quite the opposite, in fact. And also, he spits while he talks. How, how would you like his spasmoidal spittle sprayed into your food? No, it's disgusting, that. Right? But I left him alone back in the day. You know, he was annoying. I didn't like him, but I'm a tolerant person. And you know, the world is chock-a-block with spasmoids. You can't get, you can't get even with all of them. So I tolerated them. I tolerated him, but he has escalated this last few years. Previously, it was like the heat virus, right? It's not nice. No walk in a park, but you can just about live with it. But his twattiness now has reached such levels that he has bloody escalated into literal full-blown AIDS. Think about his actions in the last few years, right? First of all, he snuck into a school like a big, stroky nonce monster. And then, once he's into the body school, he steals turkey twizzlers. This bloody overprivileged penis stole turkey twizzlers off the common man, right? The humble turkey twizzler. There is nothing wrong with a turkey twizzler. And even if he thinks there is, no one was bloody making him eat them, were they? Next, in an actual bloody unparalleled shithouse read, his bloated bourgeoisie bastard decided that he could reinvent the full English breakfast. The greatest meal that has ever or will ever be invented, right? And he's going to remake it using healthier ingredients, all Tuscan beans and stuff. Do me a favour. The sheer goal of it. Honestly, I, I do not know what went in when his bloody past or something. Probably at public school, he sat at each day with a bowl full of porridge infused with the bloody seminal fluids of the rugger team or something. And now he's taking it out on all of us. Well, stop it. Because the following this breakfast is perfection, you posh banner. And now we have reached a point where this presumptuous penis is inflicting his agenda on everyone. Literally everything is being reinvented now. New recipes, tinier packets, sugar taxes. And we're talking about absolute classics, nuggets, you know, of gold. That I love, like iron brew recipes being changed. Cocoa Pops, it's forced them to change the recipe of Cocoa Pops. It's ridiculous. Nobody was eating Cocoa Pops for the nutritional value. No one goes, oh, I want a healthy meal, I'll have some Cocoa Pops. We were eating them because they were delicious. Well, they're not anymore, thanks to Jamie Buddy Oliver, are they? Honestly, and what have you improved? Yeah, you may have changed the recipe slightly, but you've still not made it a nutritious meal, have you? At the end of the day, it's still a bloody grain of rice that's had a puff of air blown up its ass. It's not a nutritious meal. You've just made it taste a bit shitter, you knobhead. Jamie Oliver, you are a disgrace. If people wanted you to have control over what they ate, they would go and eat at your bloody restaurant. So I'll tell you what, nobody's doing that anymore, are they? If I want a full English or a delicious bowl of Cocoa Pops, I should be able to have that. I will stick to mine and you stick to your bloody foie gras and tossed salads and whatever it is tossed with the bloody spunk of your old Etonian mates. Honestly, you make me sick. There will be no more final warnings. If you interfere with my, my dietary once again, I will march upon your restaurant. I will come down there. I will leave my Callum's army. It's not just people called Callum anymore. It's everyone who watches my channel. We will come. We will sit down outside your restaurants and block the door and we will protest and we will stuff our faces with McDonald's and junk food and we'll see how you like that. Honestly, you're an idiot. A up and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, I want to show you this. Look at this. Do you see his face? He is shook. He has had a disgustingly 
that stressful morning for a little lad who's not even two yet. That is my nephew. That is Eddie, right? And I'm looking after him today. I'm babysitting him. This morning, about an hour ago, taking him outside to have a little look around the garden, I pop the kettle on to make a cup of tea. In the couple of minutes that our back's turned while I'm making the tea, he has unfortunately assaulted my mother's flowers. He's picked all the flowers and buds off them. It's, I don't, I don't, I can't explain it. It's an act of aggression, right? Maybe they offended him with their beauty. Maybe he found it funny, like that scene from The Inbetweeners. It doesn't matter. He's a lad. It's just, he's expressing his aggression. He's a lad. That's fine. He's young, right? Anyway, my mum's come down a little bit later to water them, and she has just lost her stuff, right? She is screeching like a banshee out there. I've gone out there, and she's blaming me for it, how I should have watched him, like I've somehow encouraged him to sabotage the flowers or something. Oh, do me a favour. You're being pathetic, woman. Anyway, I've brought Eddie into here, into the living room, right? Settled him down with some Ben and Holly so he can recover from this disgusting outburst. And I've gone out there, and I've got out there just in time in my kitchen, which overlooks the garden, right, to see my mother grabbing my two tomato plants out of the grow bags and dumping them, uprooting them and dumping them on the lawn. I'm out there like a shot confronting her and she is trying to claim that it's somehow in some demented world like equals equals, you know, uh, uh, she's, but I've got my comeuppance because I wasn't watching Eddie. It is totally incomparable the two situations. I'm explaining that to her. Flowers are little slavenly sluts, you know, they're sitting there all hoochie coochie with their little, little open gashes open, all coming come in to be bumblebee and sample my nectar, right? They are slots, they are nothing, they are show off sitting there in a bloody wind enhancing, entrancing bumblebees and wasps into them, right? A vegetable is sustenance, it is to feed people. I was growing them for the benefit of the family, not to sit there and look good, right? It's ridiculous, it is not equals peoples, honestly. And what the worst thing about it, right, the thing that gets me most is she's recently emotionally blackmailed me not to move out of this house, saying she needs me to hear because of her arthritis and stuff. The arthritis is so bad, it's meant to be so bad, she can't help and cook or anything, but no, she can grab my tomato plants out. A up and welcome to that. Callum's corner is that fly has just landed on me again. This is driving me mad. These flies, the impertinence of the little pests. They just land on you, willy bloody nilly. Uh, this is not a rant about flies. It's not a rant. It's not rant full stop. Is it a ligma? I want to talk to you about, right? This whole thing that's been going around, ligma balls and stuff, right? Stupidly, I should have Googled it. Loads of people were saying it to me in the stream. So I just said in a tweet, what's it about? Right? And now everyone thinks I'm stupid. Someone has kindly explained it to me in a DM. It is, it's just a pathetic joke. It sounds like ligma. It's like that whole Seymour Butts and stuff. It's a play on words and it's gimpy. I do not like it. And because I tweeted it out there without thinking about it right now people think that i'm stupid they, that they're all trying to wind me up like i'm being trolled by them and that's not what's happening the only reason i didn't understand it is because i'm on a higher intellectual plane i didn't think the joke would be that pathetic you know i'm basically i'm not a gimpy little virgin like the people who find that funny uh, and before you say oh you're ugly you're ugly how could you not be a virgin i've had intercourse with 11 different women now and the people who are saying it are basically the only cranny they've seen is their mothers on the way bloody out right and actually that's the thing if you keep annoying me with this you know you better make sure you don't because my attentions will turn to your mothers you know judging by the poor grammar and spelling in your bloody tweets you're all from broken homes so maybe i will take an interest in your mothers you know your dad's been gone a while now you know she'd welcome a bit of youtuber length and i'd give it to her i'd give it to her gladly you know i'd give it to her well and before you bloody know it i'm your stepfather and you answer to me so yeah you need to think carefully about your actions because you're winding me right up it's pathetic and it's not funny my nephew, Eddie, is here. He's in the living room with my mother at the moment, so he's not exposed to my anger. I just need to get it off my chest, right? I've gone over to my sister's, the one that I like, to pick him up, because I'm looking after him for the day. It's why I'm vlogging. We're going to do loads of good stuff, right? Anyway, walking back home through the park, walking along this little pathway, this is hill down, right? I suddenly hear this... It's, it sounds like a herd of wildebeest coming down the hill. I'll look over there, and it's this kid. He's about eight years old. Fat little twat, all right? running down the hill straight up the buggy. Oh, what the hell is going on here? Right, before I know it, he's right there. I've had to reach down and restrain him before he smashed into the buggy and put my nephew in danger. All right? He starts squawking at me. Yeah, let go of me, let go of me. Like, you're going to smash the buggy over. You need to go round or wait till I've moved. Anyway, his mum starts sauntering down the hill calling him, well, Thaddeus, Thaddeus, what you expect your child to turn out, right, if you call him Thaddeus, all right? Anyway, I explain, like, he, he, you need to come and get him. He's about to... Tip the bloody buggy over. She's like, oh, he's very strong-willed. We don't like to restrain him. 
What the hell are you going on about? This is the problem with Bristol mental people who just let their children run wild like they're free-range bloody chickens or something. Anyway, he's pushing against me and I'm worried, sweaty with my anger, I'm worried that he's going to tip the buggy over, he's going to bash into it. So I have, I'm forced to take evasive action. I shoved him um, and long story short, he fell over backwards and due to his poor hand placement, he ends up putting his hand in a nettle and he starts screaming about it and crying and stuff. Well, you got what you deserve, you repulsive fat little twat. Honestly, I hope he goes to school and he's got little nettle welts on his hand all day long. No one messes with bloody Eddie. He's my nephew. He's my kin. I will not allow it idiot uh, anyway on the plus side we're on our way to the chip shop um, probably the best chip shop in all of Bristol it's got the English takeaway haven't been here for a little while but they do something called pea fritters uh, if you find a place that sells pea fritters you don't want to lose it because they're absolutely amazing ah uh, here we go the English takeaway the mecca oh you've got to be kidding me Oh, for... um, and I feel like my life is just falling apart all around me from this, to be honest with you. I'm getting triggered all of the time because I'm bloody hungry all of the time. I almost lost it with my manager today when she mentioned the shaving thing again. I'm going to have to start shaving, which I'm not looking forward to. I've just, I don't, I've got no respect for peas. Like previously, they were just a vegetable to me, but now I've been thinking about it. Like They're on my mind all the time because that's all I can eat. Just these stupid, pathetic, defenceless little peas. Like Some vegetables you can respect. You know, a pea does nothing. It can't even defend itself. You know, some vegetables have got like thorns upon them. They stop people eating them. A pea's nothing. It's just soft, squishy. You can't even crush it like an M&M &M and improve your strength or anything. It's pathetic. A pea is pathetic. All right. So, um, I've got nothing more to say about it, really. I'm just sick of them. Tomorrow will be my week, and I'm going to film myself eating my last ever bowl of peas. And I swear to God, that will be the last pea that I ever eat. The last pathetic, disgusting pea that will ever go in my mouth. I, I've got some stuff to get off my chest, first of all, because I'm a little bit triggered this morning. I finished work early, and I'm trying to walk back from work, right? And unfortunately, my journey takes me right outside a bloody stamina school, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's like a magical fairy hippie school where hippies send their children, and they just do drawings all day and stuff, and they don't wear school uniform. Anyway, I'm trying to walk past this, trying to get home. It's peeing down. It's wet as a bloody otter's pocket outside, all right? And these kids and their parents are just wafting around the pavement, three, four abreast, half of them on bloody bikes, right? Just wafting around like a fart in the wind, infecting everyone's nostrils. And you're, I, I, I'm saying, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, can you move, can you move, can I get past? And the parents are bloody arsey about it. They're making little excuses and stuff. It just does my head in, right? They're milling around in self-congratulatory little pockets of people. Oh, we've done it. We've got our kids to school again today. And they're all moaning about how tough it is getting up at seven o'clock. It's normal. It's normal to get up at seven o'clock. I myself was up at five. Do you know why it's normal for most people? Because they've got a bloody job. Idiots. God, they're so proud of themselves. Oh, I got up at seven and got my kid to school. It's the least you should be doing, you absolute spasmoid. And do you really think you're doing your child any favours? He's 13 years old. He's called bloody Thaddeus or Tarquin or Rainbow or something. And he's wearing a bloody waistcoat and a pair of flares and a little hat on him. Jesus Christ, it's practically child abuse. If you're going to raise your children like that, at least make sure they don't get in the normal folks' way. Christ almighty on your bloody bikes. They all think they're doing the world a bloody favour. Oh, we're riding our bikes to school. That's fine, but just ride them in a bloody orderly manner. Get on the road like you're meant to be. Or if you're going to go on the pavement, at least do it single file. I'm very cross and I'm sorry to be ranting, but I need to get it off my chest. I've been into work today and I'm a care assistant, right? I work out in the community, but every Monday I've got to go in and get my timesheet signed off at head office. So I've gone in, I'm queuing up with everyone else to get it done, and I have this sense of impending doom come upon me. I look up and sure enough, it's my fat wench of a manager waddling her way over. She's taking a break from eating gangsters to come and confront me, right? And that's what she does, moaning about my appearance again, about the fact that I'm not clean shaven. I explained to her, I did it for you last week. That's the first time I've clean shaven in about two years, right? And it left me with red blotches all over my skin and then dry skin a couple of days later. It's a medical issue. And she bats it straight back at me and says, it's not a medical issue, Callum. It's a hygiene issue. There's people standing around me and it, she's making out that I'm a dirty birdie, like I'm an infectious disease or something. It's a millimetre of stubble. How is it a hygiene issue? What the hell does she think I'm doing? Going in and unwrapping patients' bandages and rubbing my stubble upon their gaping wounds? Do me a favour, you're clueless. You work in an office and you spend all day long 
eating. You don't know what my job is. You've not got any idea. Shut your fat pie hole. All right? Anyway, she's threatened me with a verbal warning next time I go in like this. I don't care. I do not care. I'll be pre-prepared. What I'm going to do, I'm going to unwrap a load of Mars bars, pre-prepared, right? As soon as she opens that fat mouth of hers, I'll just lob a few of them in there. She'll be all like... <laughs> Won't be able to resist them. Gobble, 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 gobbling them down. And I'll just scarf her before she can give me the verbal warning. Don't care, right? I'm on a zero-hour contract. You barely pay me minimum wage. I don't do it for the money. I do it because I actually like the job. I just go work for another care agency. It's ridiculous. Honest to God, right? I've looked it up online, and apparently I've not got a leg to stand on. The employer can put any reasonable requests upon you in terms of grooming. Although there was one little shining light on there. Everyone's got to be treated equally. So she's going to make me shave. I'll make her shave, because she's got fat, repulsive, thick, dark hairs worming their way out between the folds of fat upon her neck, like dark, demented, interracial maggots. I'll make her shave if she makes me shave. Equals bloody peoples. Honest to God, it is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And it's nothing to do with the fact that she's a woman before some idiot starts on with the sexism. I don't care. I honestly do not care about working underneath a woman. I'll be under, I'll be over them. I'm not fussy. I can't be, right? And it's nothing to do with the fact that she's dominant or powerful. You look at my porn hub history, you see I quite like that kind of thing. But what I do have an issue with is some fat idiot getting involved in making my job more difficult when she knows absolutely nothing about it. Forcing me to shave. I don't consent. I don't consent. It's basically forced face rape. It's ridiculous. Had enough. I don't care if I get sacked. In fact, I probably will get sacked if she ever sees this. In fact, I may as well go the whole hog. By the way, love, everyone in the whole office laughs at you. There is no substitute for showering. Liberally dousing yourself in cheap budget perfume does not cover the smell of your rancid, repulsive sweat. Dick it. Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner, right? My mother has sabotaged one of my few chances of getting boom boom. That woman's selfishness has cost me a chance to open the bloody floodgates and they need opening. I, I had a date today. Didn't talk about it. Didn't build it up because I didn't want to get dashed down again like it always happens. But I was ready. I was prepared, right? Finished my stream last night. Went upstairs. Got my lovely shirt that I'm wearing. A little bit of chest hair to entice. I got it all ready. I ironed it. Laid it out of my bed, right? Run a bath. Came down for a cup of tea and I bought myself earlier in the evening a tiny Toblerone. My tiny Toblerone was missing. I couldn't understand it. I'm looking everywhere, all around the house for it. I, I confront my mother because I'm suspicious. She's got a reputation for stealing chocolate, right? She did it when I was nine years old. Right? Every chocolate off the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. The next day, my father was ashamed of her. He told us she'd have a couple of glasses of extra red wine, right? And guzzled a lot of it, the greedy guts. All right, so obviously, I'm suspicious of this. I'm confronting her. She's denying it. She says I must have just put it somewhere and forgotten. Not likely. But anyway, I'm looking everywhere for it and I cannot find it. It goes on for over an hour until she gets a hop about it and says she wants to go to sleep and I'm keeping her awake looking, right? And I take, well, just help me, help me find it. I know I bought one. Then she drops the bombshell. She'd taken it. She'd taken my tiny Tobler on the thief. Huh? She'd eaten it. I'm living about this. Why did she not just tell me earlier when the shop was still open so I could have gone and got another one? Anyway, I've come downstairs searching for something else and I've been forced into a very unsatisfactory substitute, a wagon wheel. It's a bloody school lunchbox trait. It's not like a Toblerone. And they're not even big anymore. They're called wagon wheels because they're meant to be the size of wagon wheels. They used to be big, at least. Like the size of a ball now, a tennis ball. That's what they should be called. Ball biscuit, all right? So I've had a small, second-rate snack and then gone and had my bath. I couldn't sleep. Tossing and turning all bloody night. I finally fell asleep at about 4am this morning for a few hours of thin, unsatisfactory sleep. Woke up late, right? And with this on my head. Can you see that? That is a stress spot. My mum tried to deny it and say it's just because of my diet, but no, I eat healthy, right? Loads of nourishing meats and milks and stuff, right? And dairy goods, right? I know my body and that is a stress spot. Anyway, I'm trying to gouge it out before I go off on this day. I could not find a bloody pin anywhere. I'm having to use one of my not a spasmoid giant badges and it's too deep. I couldn't get it out. I just made it look worse, right? Then I realised that I'm actually late and I have to run to the bloody cafe to meet this lass who was the sister of someone I work with. So it's going to get back to them as well. I turned up looking like a sweaty, spotty mess. It was a nightmare. You want a first date to be popping. I wasn't popping. I was stopping. It was ridiculous. I couldn't stop thinking that I had Mount Vesuvius on my head. I right? couldn't even join my frothy coffee. Left with my tail between my legs. Get back and my mum's body here with my sister. Pair of them are crafting away together. I've got the sewing machine out. Plenty of bloody pins around now, aren't there, when I don't need them. It's a nightmare. I can't even get in the room with my computer now. The pair of them are crafting away in there. I hate it when women get crafting together. They think they're like melon soup. Pop, pop, pop. Together. It makes me sick. Shut up. Just shut up. 
I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be ranting, but I'm just angry. I need Boom Boom. It's been way too long. It's not natural for a man of my age to know Pornhub as well as he does. And that, I think, is the problem. Ease of access to pornography on the internet. It's made me lazy. It's taken away my age. I'm, that's it, fact. That's it. No fap. No fap for me for a month now. I'll get my desperation back and hopefully that will drive me towards it. Ah, oh, anyway, that, 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 I'm sorry, that is the video that you've got today. Me ranting away about my mother spoiling my date. Idiot one. Ah, fit tag, this filthy little spasmoid who writes hate comments on my videos is piped up, right? He says, great video, you lanky nonce, right? Well, I'll tell you what, thick tag, you can have an opinion, you can pipe up with it once you've grown enough balls to show your own bloody face in your profile photo, rather than using a dirty, digitally edited photo of me that makes me look like a mug. I'm not a mug, you're a mug. Who let their dad off the lead? And this is from King Jammy 8 I'm only guessing that the 8 is probably your age, or your mental age at least. I mean, you're an idiot, basically. I went out there and I tried to change the world. I tried to, you know, eliminate a real world problem. I was loud, I was proud, I stood in the park and I, and I shouted my lyrics out proud. Do you think I like doing that? People were looking at me all funny like, but I did it. I did it to change the world. What did you do today? All right, I've been in town about 20 minutes now and I'm already slightly triggered okay all right so a few people have recognized me that's fine right most people really nice about it i stop say hello and they ask to take a photo of me fine in fact nice to meet you guys most of the time right however there are some of you who are absolute spasmoids i've just met one such bloke right comes up to me same as normal ask for a photo and stuff do that with him say hello to him right walk off and he shouts after me tic tac at me, right? Embarrassing me in front of everyone. It's like, what do you think you're doing? Insulting me for being a tic tac. I, I don't even care anymore that I look like a tic tac. You know, my point that I was making back then is that who are you to criticise? I mean, this bloke looked like a right chav. He looked like Dylan Brewer. He's about 20 years old, all right, dripping in chav head to toe. He had plasters on his hands that were all stained, where I could only assume that the AIDS was literally seeping out of him. Uh, and he's insulting me. Oh, well done on your slightly round head, mate. Saying you're an absolute human equivalent of an age-ridden condom, personality-wise. Spasmoid. Uh, okay, that's out of my system. I'm getting back into the crowd now. I need to get some stuff. I've bought nothing so far. It's a nightmare. I, I've been back home for about an hour now, and to be honest with you, I wish I hadn't bloody bothered. I've walked into a madhouse in the ultimate act of betrayal and lies and deceit. All right, so I come in, right, stick the kettle on, and the house is a bit of a mess because my sisters have been over, my mum's been entertaining them, you know, with all the nieces and Eddie here and stuff, right? Anyway, I don't moan about it, I don't moan, that's the way I am, I'm a giving person, all right? So I stick the kettle on, and I go and think, I'll get my calendar chocolate. I was looking forward to it, I was thinking about it on the bus, you know, I didn't eat it before I left because it was too early for chocolate, so I, I thought I'd have it with my cup of tea. Go up to my bedroom, right, and my calendar has been ransacked. The remaining chocolates have been ripped out of it. Cannot believe it. That's my bloody Christmas calendar. It's my chocolate calendar. I look forward to it every day, opening the little thing open. You know, it's a ritual. I saw him downstairs talking to my mum, you know, confronting her about it, basically, because she's a chocolate fiend. She's known for thieving chocolate, right? And she denies it. She, you know, she definitely didn't do it, right? And I'm thinking she's never stolen my calendar chocolates before, right? Anyway, she explains to me that it was Eddie, my nephew, my two-year-old nephew, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm a little bit down about this. You know, it's the ultimate act of betrayal. He knows that was mine. You know, we've got a ritual, but Eddie's over here. He brings his calendar. We open them together. He's never stolen one of mine, all right? So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about it, you know, feeling, quite frankly, a little bit annoyed at him, right? And then I think, you know, my calendar's far too high for him to get off to. I've got it on a high shelf in my bedroom and it's not like the bed's there or something, right? So I go to my mum again and I'm confronting her and it all comes out in a wash, doesn't it? And it turns out it was Bluebell, my niece Amy's daughter, who has stolen the chocolates, right? It's basically my sister's fault, Amy, because she forces them to be vegan. They've got no other choice but to feed chocolate just to experience something nice for once. Christ almighty. I mean, I'll deal with it, you know, she, it's a kid, you know, I can deal with it, you know, but it's not, it's, it's, it's my calendar! Happy New Year to you all, not for me, should be, had an incredible night last night, spent it with my lady, the fireworks were booming and they were not the only thing booming if you know what I mean, I basically spent the evening surfing on the sea of incredible. Today I'm coming home, I'm in an Uber, I'm feeling ultra relaxed, full of hope, you know, all my alpha male desires are just being sated. And then I walk through the door and I'm brought crashing back down to work by my bloody sister Amy again, right? I come in and the whole house has been trashed. She's been here last night with her children celebrating New Year. Well, apparently celebrating New Year means trashing.
washing my house. Make no effort to tidy it up. Obviously, it expects me to do it, so I'm not having it. I get in the shower thinking I'm going to go over to Gaz, play some FIFA. I'm not going to have my buzz body killed. Anyway, start to get my stuff together, and I try to find my headphones. I have to go on public transport. I don't like to be left alone with my own thoughts. This is what I find. My buddy AKG ones have had that rubber thing bitten off. I can't even find it. They're Bit has actually been bitten, so it's all misshapen. I can't even use it. My Stenhouses have had the ear knob, the, the, the nubbing, the, the earbud just pulled right off it. You know, they've been in my room, our children, and just destroyed 80 quid's worth of bloody headphones. I confront my sister about it, and she's just laughing it off like it's nothing. You know, she says, well, what do you expect me to do? I expect you to control your children, to not let them destroy my stuff. Was I involved in a bloody decision to let multiple men chop their muck up inside you? No, I wasn't, you know. Was I involved in your poor parenting decisions to raise your children with the same diet and discipline as a flock of free-range bloody chickens? No, I wasn't, so why should I bear the consequences of it? Oh, it drives me mad, honestly. And she just will not accept that she's done anything wrong. You know, it's her responsibility as a parent not to let them destroy my stuff. Now, I've got to go out in public transport, and I'm telling you, I hate it, you know. Public transport is awful, you know. If you haven't got something to distract you with music, I've got like a soundtrack. I think happy thoughts. Without music, my mind will turn on itself, and I'll be worrying about inadequacies of girth and length from last night or something that don't need to be worried about because I'm very average, you know. And it's, it's, I, I, I can't be in the moment if I actually think about the moment. I need a distraction. Oh, God. And you know what? Did it make it worse, right? She says, oh, if it means that much to you, Ed, he says, why don't you keep Bluebell? That's her daughter's Christmas present. You can keep this and you can use it if it means that much to you, right? That, 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 this is a really big, generous gesture she's made, right? I can either have no music or I can use her please, eight-year-old daughter's headphones, which I shed like a unicorn, right? That me with my head out on public transport like that. She's taking a bloody piss. I'm sorry to start the new year with a rant, but this is what I'm dealing with. New Year's resolution number one. I am getting the hell out of this house ASAP because the disrespect that I have just had to endure is the straw that broke the alpha male's back in this case. It's unbelievable. It's just disgusting. Honest to God, right? So, I've run a bath up there. I mean, it's been a freezing cold day today. I've been chilly as anything. I've been out in it all day. So, I thought, you know what? I'll reward myself with a lovely hot bath. And side note, my lady got me this incredible thing from Lush, a bath bomb called a dragon's egg. So it is, you know, like the perfect opportunity to use this. So I've run my bath, I've popped the dragon's egg in, I've gone to take my clothes off in my bedroom, stick my robe on and come and get into my bath. And my mum scoops, she scuttles straight into the bathroom as soon as I go into my bedroom. And I go to try and get into the bathroom, she's in there, I'm banging on the door. She says, you'll have to leave me, I'm busy now. Oh, what the hell are you doing? I'm busy, I'm using the toilet, just go away. I go away and she's in there like 15 minutes. She's having a bloody poo. Honest to God. And side note, right? All over Christmas, all I bloody heard from her is I can't move my bowels. Oh, I can't move my bowels. I can't shift them. I can't shift them. She even went out and bought something called bloody punty fat cakes today. Some kind of disgusting little licorice that apparently makes you poo. Well, it bloody does make you poo because she's doing it. Well, she did it in my bloody lovely bathroom that was meant to be scented of nice dragon's egg. Now it smells like that. I walk in there after she's finished and she's just skipping off down the stairs like she's three bloody stone lighter. And I'm confronted. I'm smacked in the face with a wall. A fog of this revolting smell. It's like a post-apocalyptic nuclear waste ground in there. Oh my God. I go in there. I, it's like thick. You can almost chew in it. I have to flee out of there. Like The bath looks amazing. Incredible. It was even popping and stuff, but you can't smell it. What you can smell is the smell of my mum's bloody greed over Christmas. Brussels sprouts, Christmas dinner, there's a toffee feed that she bloody scoffed last night that were mine. Oh God, now what am I meant to do? You know, I either go and sit in a bath that stinks of my mother's bloody rectal waste, or I wait for that to shift. And by the time that smell shifts, my bath will be bloody tepid. Oh, she's revolting. It's just disgusting. It's like psychological warfare. And that dragon's egg was a symbol of bloody love. And that's what she's done. She's basically shat upon the love. Oh, God. I'm, I'm getting out of this house. New Year's resolution number one.